Good morning. I'm Ron Garcia. Actually, Ronald Williams Garcia. I come from the Center of Positive Humanities, LLC. We do business here in Dover as Williams Garcia and Associates. We are an executive coaching and conflict resolution practice. And we like to say that we serve you to make a better you. So, we started our business to assist business leaders, managers, and small business owners to become better at what they do. And what they do is they manage people. So we help them to become better managers of people. We're passionate about seeing others to improve their business skills. By training and background, I'm an attorney, I'm a trial attorney, I'm also a clergy member, I'm also a licensed mental health provider working here at Dover Air Force Base. So I take all those different backgrounds and skills and put it together with what we call positive psychology coaching mentoring program to do what I do as an executive coach. We provide a unique service for our clients. We provide coaching, consulting, strategic planning, conflict resolution, training, and facilitation and strategic planning. We're trained primarily to help the client to get an understanding and plan for addressing the interpersonal relationships in their business. And we do this first and foremost by helping them to identify areas of conflict in their business and give them methodologies or ideas that they can use to resolve the conflict in their business. And our clients, as a result, see a growth in their business as they're better able to manage their people. So that kind of excites them to continue to work with us. We provide our services by, by what I call a technological telecommunication service. That's a big name to say short. What we do is we use Skype, we use the internet, we use um, all those technological services to work with our clients. Our clients like it better because it doesn't, it doesn't impede in their daily activities. They can call us, we're flexible, we're available 24 hours, so they can call us or they can you know, do Skype if they really need to see a person. They can see us through Skype or they can see us through what we call freeconferencingcall.com. And all these services are pretty reliable, so it works well. We maintain two websites. There's no particular reason for why we have two, it's just that it helps better to have two. The main website is CFAPH at CFAPH.org. CFAPH, of course, stands for Center for Positive Humanities. Our websites are very interactive. We have online payment centers, we have online um, registration centers with online um, you can upload all the forms that you need to have in order to begin to work with us. We have a um, testimonial page that from clients that we worked with previously. And one of the things that we want to do as soon as we can figure out how to do it and not breach the confidentiality of our clients is to put an online client list of the people that we worked with previously. Because we found out in studies done by coaching organizations, people like to see who you work with before, before they want to work with you. So we'll be able to do that soon. We constantly update our web page at least once, or, once a week, no less than twice a month. And we maintain an online presence at Facebook. We have a Facebook fan page, which is separate from my personal page. We have an Instagram. Not a lot of stuff on Instagram right now. We're just getting into it. But we do have an Instagram site. And we have a LinkedIn site, which is my, really my kind of baby. I like to connect with people on LinkedIn. I have over 500 contacts now, and I'd like to get even more. So we encourage people to hit us on our fan page, and we encourage people to hit us on our LinkedIn. My greatest challenge is to educate people on what do we mean by executive coaching. It's interesting. People don't know what it is. They say, oh, you're a life coach? No, I'm not a life coach. I'm not going to tell you how to get along with your boyfriend or make your sister, your daughter, stop coming home at 2 in the morning. That's not what I do. What I do is help you as a manager, as a business leader, as a small business owner to be better in your organization, to be better with your clients, to be better with your workers. 
So that's that's the challenge. Getting people to understand that executive coaching is actually a service that can help you gain profits and gain efficiency and effectiveness in your organization. We our other challenge is to get out and network with other business leaders, managers, and small business owners. And one of the ways that I do that is Lloyd knows I'm very active with the Central Delaware Chamber of Commerce. In fact, that's my social outlet, so I like to go there just to meet people and have fun and drink coffee and just be with people. Um, the other greatest challenge is because I am an attorney, because I am a clergy member, because I am a licensed mental health provider, and because I work for Dover Air Force Base and at the mortuary providing those kind of services, the greatest challenge I have personally is being able to manage all this stuff and fit it in within a 24-hour day. It's a, it's a task that I haven't quite figured out yet. And the greatest ally I have is my cell phone because it helps me to remember, you're supposed to be here, you're supposed to be there. Again, I'm Ronald Williams Garcia from Center for Positive Humanities, doing business as um, Williams and Garcia and Associates. My contact information is up here on the last slide. Oh, I forgot to show you a picture of my office. I know that the materials I got wanted to see where we work from. So you see my computer, you see my library, you see my uh, all that, all the doodads on the wall, whatever that means. And then my phone number is 302 703 1036. My toll free is 888 813 3972. My Skype is TSM 002. My free conference bridge line is 712 770 4700. The email I've already given you. And my personal email is CFAPH at CFAPH. Or sometimes it works well. We found out yesterday it doesn't work as well as we wanted to work. but. <laughs> It's, it's coming along. Thank you very much for your time. Um, that's my presentation. So your, your challenge is, uh, is educating people about what an executive coach does or what an executive coach can do for you, really. Correct. Um, so I, talk about some of your successes so far. What have, what have you seen as far as being successful in, in that? Have you, have you had the experience of going out and actually uh, coaching? I have had coaches. I have worked with some organizations. I don't know that I can really tell you who they are, but I can tell you that one of the ways that I actually do it with people is coaching is a major profession. All the major business schools are picking up on executive coaching. So one of the tools that has helped me greatly is the Harvard Business Review has put out a pretty comprehensive article called What Do Coaches Do For You? And in this article, it also talks about what coaches need to have. Um, there's a whole table of graphics that were produced by a survey for coaches to show you the top three reasons why coaches are engaged, how much it costs, is coaching personal, what to look for for a coach. So I can pretty much give this to potential clients. They can scan it, they can read it, and then they can make a decision on whether they want to work with me. So that's kind of how I cross that bridge of letting people know what executive coaching is. So do you have specific uh, tools that you use to go in and address these issues at conflict resolution? Do you, yes. Do you have uh, conflict within your group, um, within, the, within an organization, there's, for whatever reason, two groups or two people not working well together. So you have specific tool sets that you bring in to resolve that, or do you design and adjust on the go? We, when we go into an organization, we want to understand where the conflict is coming from. So we actually will stay there, we'll, do, we'll talk with the people, we'll do 360s to find out, 360 assessments to understand where it's coming from. And then depending on if it's an active conflict, if it's a resolved conflict, or it's a potential conflict, it determines what skills we'll use. If it's an ongoing, because I'm an attorney, I can do mediation, I can do arbitration, I can do um, alternative dispute resolution skills. If it's not quite to that point, then we can do training on how to avoid it, or we can even do small group facilitation to talk about how to avoid it. If it's one that's already occurred, but there's some latent feelings about it, then we can address that also through training and facilitation. 
When you're speaking to somebody like a mixer or such, what are some of the triggers for you? Like when you're speaking to them, what would they say that makes you think, I could definitely help this person, I can definitely help this business owner? I think the greatest thing that I look for in a client is willingness. You know, if you say, oh, we, you know, I don't have any problems in my organization, then, you know, sure you do. Every organization has conflict. So if you tell me you don't have any, that tells me you're not really willing to take the time to look at it and try to resolve it. The other thing is they have to have an open mind. You have to say, okay, well, I can use this individual big to help you resolve the problems. You know, and sometimes it takes a great deal of trust. So I'm looking on how you react to me when I say, well, I can provide this for you. Oh, that's okay, I don't need, you know, well, that's not a client, you know, at that point. Down the road it may be, but right then it's not. So that's what I look for. I hope that answers you. So what does the optimal client look like for you? What's your target audience? So we got a lot of companies, we got colleges, we got entrepreneurs, we got commercial, military. What is your optimal target? What are you looking for? Tell me a little bit about what the perfect client that we can bring to you would look for. My optimal client are small business owners okay. because they're the ones that are working the hardest to make their organization grow. Sometimes these larger organizations, like for instance, I think Play Texas across the road somewhere, they, are, you know, they're so multifaceted and so overdeveloped that getting to the right person in that organization is a chore in itself to get to approach them. But small business owners are eager. They want to grow. They want to get their product out there. They want to do whatever they can do to make their business work. So my optimal client are small business owners. What size small business? Obviously, you know, what, what 25 to about 12, zero to 25 employees. Okay. So are you almost like taking over the HR function to help mediate between employees? Not at all. HR has their own function of managing personnel and making sure that this is a safe workplace and a, and a productive workplace. I work along with, um, I think I can never pronounce the name right, but it's SHRM. Sure. I work along with them because we come in and bring the expertise that often they don't have. So we're not we're not trying to replace them, we're actually an adjunct or a consultant to them. We, you know, I provide skills, legal skills, I provide the mental health skills that I can translate into coaching skills, you know, things that they don't normally have, you know, so no, to answer your question, no, I don't try to replace anyone. How many employees do you have? Me. Just you? That's it. Because all my services are done over computer systems or over computer technology. I don't really need any employees. And I am I am my business. So as I told someone here the other week, my business is selling me. And then I work with the clients to solve whatever issues they need to have solved. Do you see it growing? Do you see your business growing? Bring on more coaches? It's right now it seems well, let me ask you, that's two ways I have to answer that. Across the nation, yeah, coaching is, is, is exploding. It's sort of like the same thing as a licensed mental health provider was a couple of years ago. Everybody wants to get into it. But not everybody has the qualifications or background or skill to do it. So it's getting, you know, it's blowing up. But the problem is you have a lot of people who are incompetent out there. In an area like Dover, where there's been less exposure to executive coaching, the challenge again is to help educate them to what we do. You know, how can we help you? Why should you come to me? Why should I be allowed to work with your people? So that's a challenge in Dover. But I'm finding one of the things I like about Dover is that they're receptive. You know, I can I've, I've had people from the SHLM invite me to you know socials, and I think I'm going to be. A, um, doing a presentation before the Delaware Executive Council or something as a, a personnel managers that's coming up in November. They asked, so they are receptive here. Good. So I got a company, it's 15 of us, small company, and being easy on it, we're out there beating our feet every day, and got some employees and everything else. At what point do we need to call you in? What is going to be our triggering event? Someone like you to come in. It's a number of them. If you have a small company and they all walk out one day, that's a clear sign that you need me. If, if you have a small company and one guy is saying, I'm going to sue you because you didn't pay me whatever, then you know that might be a problem that's across the board and that's a sign that you need me. 
if there's, you know, if you're feeling like I just can't get my people to work in the way I want them to work, and you've tried everything you can think of on your own, you need me. So that's, those are all the triggering events that would bring us in. Yes, sir. I had a couple things for you. Uh, number one, have you ever done business with the SBA as a either a host or a guest speaker? Addressing small businesses. With the uh, SBA, small, SBA business. Uh, small Business Administration. The only contact I've had with them was with their, um, I'm, I'm bad with names, but I mm -hmm. know that they, they provided a service where they acted like a mentor for me and, mm -hmm. and I was their mentee, I think it's their mm -hmm. senior executive service or something like that. Okay. So that's the only contact I've really had with them. Score? Score, rather. Yeah. Oh, score. Okay. score. You're yeah. talking about SBA. So, you know, if you flip that relationship, you're, you're such an articulate speaker and you have so much to offer. I think uh, one of the things the SBA does is provide loans to small businesses. Oftentimes, they don't know how to execute those loans or where that money is best spent. You know, if you're doing consulting or coaching, you know, you can incorporate some of that, uh, you know, some of your services because you can't grow a business without uh, qualified people. You know, and you're you know, the challenges you have as a one-person shop. So there might be some partnership opportunities with the SBA. I think going forward, they're going to look to uh, do more consulting to the businesses they pass pass out money to, <laughs> uh, you know, because there, there's that huge gap. Okay, you know, what do I do prior to the funding? And once I get the funding, where are those funds best spent? You know, and how do I utilize that? That, that might be an opportunity for you. Thank you. Uh, number two is YouTube. I don't know if you've ever done anything on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, you can actually set up channels, you know, for your business, where you could put that education element uh, in there. So tell them about what you do, etc. And oftentimes, people like to be directed to that so they can listen prior to actually meeting with you, having a business meeting. It allows them to get well prepared, I think, and, and ask intelligent questions. I'm kind of YouTube challenged. I'm thinking, how, what, what machinery do I need to make a video? And oh. someone told me that you can make an excellent video just from using a cell phone. Correct. Yeah. So, or even an iPad uh, um, allow you to. I, I actually saw a problem where you know everything's going. You can kind of go live now with everything, even with Facebook. Facebook's live. But even when I went on to YouTube the other day, actually, you can actually. Um, if you got Android or iPhone, you know, the most uh, up-to-date phones, you can actually do a live uh, recording of yourself and put it on there on YouTube. And, yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes, you know, uh, introduction through an email saying this is who I am, etc. I've given you a link to one of my uh, YouTube videos. It explains what we do and how we've helped, you know, local businesses, etc. That might be a good marketing card for you. Uh, I'm, I'll give you my business card after this. I'm happy to at least point you in the right direction. And then the last one was uh, an actual question. A lot of times in organizations can't move forward. It has to do with behaviors, either at the uh, leadership level or through their employees. Through your assessment process, do you incorporate assessing what type of behaviors might be log jamming, you know, progress? We use the uh, Thomas um, Thomas Kilsey um, conflict evaluation. Mm -hmm. We also use a number of other evaluations. But we're looking at a lot of times, and you're absolutely right, a lot of times people, especially leaders, get technical skills. And so that advances them through the organization because they have greater technical skills. But what they're lacking in is people skills. So yeah, we do the assessment. And we like the 360s because they also give us the opinions of the other workers in the organization. Thank you. You're welcome. No, you I've owned a couple of businesses. So. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What about utilizing a service like SurveyMonkey or similar, where you can make some sort of assessment to send out to the employees as an offering to the top executive? You know, you may not think there's a problem, but let's say we just send out this, you know, anonymous survey to all your employees and get a real feedback about how they think you know, the business is doing and how they're feeling and working in the business, just to take back then this report and say, hey. You know, you think everything's great and roses here, but employees X, Y, and Z are feeling this way, and there's some tension here. Like, is that something that you think would be beneficial to 
my hesitation in using survey monkey is that when we're going to use those instruments like that, they want to know that they've been validated. And survey monkey is sort of like not validated yet. So at least from a from a scientific evidential review. So I, but I like survey, I mean survey monkey, I use it to get people feedback on how did I perform. You know, did I give you what you wanted? So I do have some survey monkey, but I wouldn't want to do an in you know an actual assessment in a company use a survey monkey. They probably look at me like you know. I don't think that's the case. I think it's a valuable instrument because you're not trying to say this is a scientific assessment. You're saying this is kind of a pulse. Like, I, we just want to give you an overview of how your employees realistically feel because it's an anonymous survey. And take it back to them and say, you know, at this point, you can decide for us to do a scientific assessment. I'll try yeah, it, it, if, a, if an executive, I, I see what you're saying. I, I think I, I do. Uh, an executive is saying, I don't really need your services. He may not realize, he or she may not realize that they need your Or services. may not want to realize it. Yeah, they don't even want to see what's <laughs> going on. And that might be a way of opening their eyes and saying, hey, listen, this is what we got. This is the feedback we received. You have 50 people working here, and all 50 people said, this is an issue. Yeah, and that can help you navigate this issue. Denise and I worked together for years, and I can tell you that I don't think we did anything like that for a long time. We did everything in our management groups and stuff like that. So we thought we knew what was going on. And then when we threw everything out organizational wide, what we thought and what we got back was quite different. Let me ask you a question. If, for instance, I build a survey monkey instrument and I send it to XYZ Corporation and say, listen, how do you feel about working here? Whatever, yeah. hypothetically. And then I go to the person hiring official in that company and say, listen, you know, this is what I got. How do you think that they would react to, well, where did you get off sending this to my... Well, I think we missed step one, which was approaching the executive and yeah. saying, please give me the opportunity. Right. If you think everything's yeah. amazing right. here, okay. then let's, let's, you know, let's take a poll and make sure that your employees feel the same right. way. If they're all on the same page, then kudos to you for yeah, having more of a question. It has to be from the top. Yeah. 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 It's a gateway to get in the door. Yeah. Right. That's what it is. That's yeah. door. You, you want to show them that you can offer them something? It's kind of like your quote unquote your sales pitch. You haven't sold them anything, it's a benefit. The benefit to your company is your employees are happy, everyone's on the same page. And they have a voice. And they have a voice. Okay. That's the far too many companies, most employees that poll will tell you they don't have a voice in their company. And the whether it's a ten person or whatever. And the executive group might be surprised it might be that hiring manager yeah. is is that problem. I mean where everything is is it, <laughs> It's, it's amazing what you find out through the surface. And that's the anonymous thing. Also, yeah. we, for some of yeah. our clients, we do do third party surveys. The trend will tell you someone will open up to a third party to someone that works for that company. Yeah. Yeah. They'll give you a, they'll give you a true feedback. Right. Even customers will give you a true feedback of what they really think of that company. So they know I don't have any leverage over Harmony or anything. You don't have any leverage. You don't have leverage. Yeah. And the executives yeah. and you, I mean, it's, it's all very random. Nobody knows right. where it's coming from. Right. And, and to talk about your Facebook Live, I'd say how I would market, you got to brand yourself. You are the company, so you're branding yourself. Live YouTube, I would give like maybe once or twice a week your tips of the week. Get people to buy into that to tune in at 7.30 on Wednesday night. I'm going to be live sitting in my office. Here's your five minute Facebook tip of the week. Oh, you guys don't mind. I'm ready to meet that. Oh, no. Yes, sir. I was going to say to follow up on that survey monkey, what I would do is I'd say, you know, part of our process is confidentiality. It's really the foundation of what we do for our clients. And, you know, I'm happy to sign like a non disclosure agreement to compare it with this survey. And I think people get a level of comfort with that. Right. Yeah, it, it, it almost, I mean, it's, it's a very low cost to do this. Um, well, just a little bit of time. Uh, you, you throw this in there as a, a premium, something free that you do for their company, as a door opener. I think mean, that, that could be very valuable. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. And email marketing is the way to go because you get it on all your devices. It's personal, but yet you're, you're doing it from your phone, whatever you want to do it from. The reason why so many companies are switching to email marketing anyway 
it tells you the trends, you yield about a 4,300% ROI return on an email marketing. Really? Yes. All those depending on, like depending <laughs> on the dollar. Mm -hmm. and for you to send out that same survey, same sales pitch, what was the number? 43? 4,300% is the average ROI return. Wow. Did not know that. And that's why they do it, because you, you don't have stamps, you're not mailing something out. 91% of all emails are open. So you have that shot. That's why also a lot of companies are going to text messaging now too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at your dentist and, and doctor's appointment, what do they do? You get an email, you get a text message. There's no more really phone calls. It's a lost art. No one wants to answer the phone. No. You know, seriously, nobody wants that personal communication anymore. It's just, oh, no. you know, we do things now, you know, different from, from the 80s, from the 50s and all that. It's just changing. And when people start looking at email marketing and you get on that email list, they're going to look forward to it every month that you're sending. That's why so many newsletters now go. Even here's another thought: we do we design them too. Email newsletters every month for employees and customers is a great way to get buy-in as your employees and your customers to keep shopping and doing business with you. It's an outstanding way. It's, you pay for the design. You can get on Mailchimp, whatever you want to do. You can send two thousand out on Mailchimp for free. They don't even build it. So. That's why I said the return on investment for the that, marketing is in, in that same, do you find that too much is, is too much though? I, I don't, because people will have that option. They're gonna look at it. Now, you don't wanna bombard people. There are some companies that send them twice a week, once a month. You've gotta find your niche of, of what you're looking for in different types of, of marketing email sure. goes out. So it's all gonna, it, it's like anything else. You know, when you come home and you open up your mailbox and every car dealership has sent you a postcard to come buy a car today, right. or you know, you're going to weed through of, of what uh, of what of what you want to uh, you know go through and and basically what you're going to shop at. The way to sell today is not the sales pitch anyway. People don't want oh come in and and we're 1995 for this. They want information about your product. You're the product. Uh, Dana's product is accounting. Why do you need accounting? Why do you need financial services? Rick's is insurance. That's how people make a decision to buy. If you just go out and get a sales pitch, they're going to turn you off. But if you're giving them good information, they're going to open that email every single time you send it to them. And you build your mailing list by just the people you network with? Or sure. And if you're on LinkedIn, let me tell you, LinkedIn is a great way to do business, mm -hmm. especially with someone like you. Every time that you friend request someone or they request you, I would send them, I type up a message saying, I thank you. Thanks for connecting with me. This is what I do. If you ever need this, I'm here to, you're available. And I give you a LinkedIn discount. It's a perfect way. Good stuff. Not to put you on the spot, but I have a question for you. <laughs> As I was doing a presentation, I mentioned the idea that I use the technological services, and I kind of watched, I watched the people I was talking to. And I, know, I saw that there was, you kind of grimaced, so I was wondering why you said it. When I was talking about the technological services, Skype, um, the online services, yeah, whatever, whatever works for your, your company. I, I, uh, I embrace technology as much as I have to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I put my hand on the key, I expect the computer to work for me, and that's it. And I, I'm not, you know, deep into it that way. I mean, it's a person for, I can't Skype for my own, but that's a, it's a tool that my phone put in for me about a year or so, but he upgraded the computer. I don't mean to put you on the spot, I just kind of watch. I'll put me on the spot, Fred. You're the one standing up there, I'm, I'm sitting here. Yes, sir. I was going to say, within your marketing plan, you know, one of the biggest things to get a hold of right now is millennials. Millennials represent 53 million uh, of the labor force, whereas baby boomers only represent 52 million. And that, that transition just happened over the past uh, 12 months. So out there when you're researching like Harvard or if you go to something called Wharton Knowledge, they'll have these articles which will tell you how to market to millennials. A lot of millennials are now in hiring positions, so uh, you know they're part of either junior or mid-level management. If you know how to get to them, because they're very different than how we grew up and how we built our careers, you know, you can actually um, be more successful in how you target your marketing. 
So let me give you an example. So the uh, like the YouTube channel. Let's say you have you know uh, information on on like a Monday or a Tuesday. Call it some sort of theme. You know, I work a lot with the military, so I call it Military Mondays. You know, tie it in like that. But at the end of it, make sure that there's some sort of live interaction where you can actually answer questions either online or through text or something like that. Millennials respond to that. We're starting to do a lot more of that in the classroom because I'm an instructor at the college. And, you know, we'll use their devices during instruction, whether it's a group project or something like that. We call that like tie-ins, you know. Um, you may want to do the same in your marketing. Right. Thank you. I'll give you a couple numbers real quick and I'll be done about your YouTube. So here's some facts for 2016 from Google. More 18 to 49 year old people YouTube reaches more than any cable uh, network in the United States combined all of them. Also, there's over one billion videos loaded every day on YouTube. Oh, and the, the, the other number, um, that's the room by Google's like there, there's almost 300 hours of video uploaded every minute to YouTube. So that tells you where the reach is going. Live TV is, is Stop. Yeah, live TV is going away. Stuff like that. This is where people, you know, no one. I, I don't watch live TV unless it's maybe a sports so event. But YouTube addicts. Yeah, because uh, that's where your audience. That's where they are. I mean, as people wake up in the morning, what do they check? Email, Facebook, and watch the video. That's the trend. I don't buy instructional books anymore when it comes to how to pick something. I just go on YouTube. Just going, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to fix my car on YouTube, right? How to put it There's no revenue stream from that. No, no. No. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> no, they do. It's all ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's the next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Last word. We have about eight minutes left before we cut you loose at ten or nine. What time? Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Garcia.